okay so uh, to start this session uh, first uh, we will see what is really product so uh, in this session we will mainly discuss about uh, api products and uh, uh, what what additional values we can deliver uh, using api product so if we take product product is something uh, that uh, that we can sell or that we can add value to uh, one of our customers right so uh, products can be either digital or physical products so uh, if we consider digital products as an example uh, we can think about uh, something like google search api so the google search api allows you to uh, uh, search something uh, by providing certain queries and get some results so if we consider about this google api it doesn't charge you but uh, through the data and uh, the information that we provided through our search uh, is kind of an indirect revenue for them so products either uh, can be given free or we can charge or we can have some sort of subscription or likewise there can be different uh, payment mechanisms so another another product a digital product example can be uh, weather information service so weather information is something that uh, all of us need right so when we go outside or uh, when you go trip or something like that we need to get some idea about uh, weather and uh, how things behave so uh, that is our requirement and uh, there's a product which is a weather api product that satisfied uh, our requirement so that we can identify as a product so if we consider early days we had the mainly physical products but these days we are like seeing a trend uh, most of the organizations are focusing on their digital products and uh, giving some value to their customers uh, using these products so uh, next we will see what uh, how we can delivering a business value to our customers uh, using these apis so if we consider early days uh, where this like api management and other api related stuff uh, before we introduce api related stuff then at that time uh, what we had was like set of business services uh, and data and uh, in the other side we did had uh, consumers or applications which consumes uh, the set of data so over the time uh, like uh, there are like uh, consumer base go rapidly and there are like different applications uh, there are different tools uh, that kind of things came and they need to consume data more and more at the same time uh, those in my, in the in this diagram right side you can see set of services and the business record and data so when we expose these services and data to outside in a secured and controlled manner uh, it was becoming kind of a challenge right because when people uh, expose their data to outside they need to inbuild certain authentication authorization uh, access control likewise there are different uh, quality of services that you also need to build into these services as a uh, service developer in addition to focus on my real business logic now i have to work on this quality of services as well so this can be like uh, implementing authentication filter kind of thing so then after some time uh, api management layer introduced and uh, with that there are a lot of uh, different companies involved in this business and uh, most of the leading uh, uh, companies in it industry invested heavily on the apis domain so they build the api management solution so that is how this middle part field and uh, apis came into picture but if we take uh, nowadays most people uh, don't directly implement the service so they start with the apis and uh, from the api they will go to service layer and the implementation implementation layer eventually so if you take today world so you can if you if you have already have some sort of services then you can deliver business value using these services via an api so that is the idea of this thing so if we consider some sort of example probably if you have uh, some uh, uh, pizza delivery mechanism or the pizza shop you may have uh, when you initially work on uh, this particular project you may not need to expose these services to outside as apis 
but when your business grow rapidly first you may need to expose a set of apis to your partners right so let's say you have a freezer factory and uh, you have a set of retail uh, outlets and uh, those can be franchise or anything like that so then you need to expose services to them so initially you expose these services to your set of partners right so then you know your business grow rapidly and eventually at some point you may decide okay i need to expose my api to uh, public uh, those who are in outside so in that case you can uh, publish that uh, publish those apis into marketplace kind of thing then your in consumers or the application developers can directly consume these apis for example if i am developing a some sort of travel application then at any point i need to order pizza i can use these apis and develop my application so likewise it can go into different levels so when you go into deep uh, of this presentation uh, we will see how these uh, things can be implemented so uh, all of you know uh, application market uh, goes rapidly so that means so if you consider uh, uh, google app store or uh, apple marketplace there are like millions of applications available and they keep growing so with the increasing number of application uh, these applications need some sort of data right most of the time uh, these applications consumes data through api so in recent report uh, released by the apmai i think uh, it was in 2019 in their report they have explicitly mentioned uh, 80% of the worldwide traffic or the internet traffic now api traffic so with this you can see uh, whenever we see application growth eventually apis will also grow so these are like uh, two uh, one of the largest uh, application marketplaces uh, apple app store and uh, uh, google app store so and with the devices uh growing and uh, this application consumption also goes high so there are a lot of application and uh, there are a lot of devices which consumes these uh, applications and eventually as a result of that uh it will uh, lead to a uh, number of high api calls and uh, uh, recent reported that mobile application revenue expect to go up to uh, 189 billions in uh, 2020 and uh, smartphone uh, average smartphone user use uh, 30 applications monthly so that means so this application consumption also uh, goes high and uh, let me point out some of the other facts so in a, a recent report uh, released sometimes back uh, it was mentioned that uh, expedia ebay salesforce they are getting majority of their revenue true api so if we take some companies like stripe uh, they are generating 100% of their revenue uh, through these api calls so previously we discuss about the application growth and the true the application uh, due to application growth how api consumption also grow and here you see uh, many leading organizations are generating their revenue mainly through apis so with all of these Uh, api is becoming like kind of a very uh, key point uh, within any of the digital enabled organization right so when you build your business apis you need to deliver some sort of value to your customer right so when you build your value proposition you need to focus on few main things so that is what i am going to talk in this slide so when when you try to deliver a uh, value proposition or when you try to build your value proposition uh, first thing you need to focus is your customer right so some of our customers might not really need to uh, use these apis and build kind of a value proposition so we have to identify our customer correctly and then understand their pain points so what are their real pain points whether they need to scale uh, whether they need to build uh, i mean increase their sales Uh, whether they need to like let their users to have like seamless experience so that sort of things uh, we need to understand then we need to have clear idea about uh, 
goals of your customer for what they really know they they, they whether they need to like uh, build a franchise chain with their development or else they need to like uh, expand this business across the world and that sort of idea also need, you need to have to build value proposition using uh, these APS and also you need to have clear idea about available assets to build this solution so if you have clear idea about these things then you can build some sort of value proposition so when you go to our customers and talk so we mainly focus on uh, these four areas so apis are uh, like i mentioned earlier apis are mainly acting as an interface to this value proposition so to deliver your value or the value addition you are using apis so mainly we are helping them to uh, go to their target using the apis and also that 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 is the foundation of their organization's digital experience so uh, apis usually like do two main valuable things so apis connect your customers partners and the outside people to your data and services and also it simplifies the connection process so for example uh, if we go back to our previous pizza case then uh, you are having a set of like business functionalities and then you can connect your customers and your partners and uh, your uh, other uh, other organizations into your system using these apis and also maybe we can make it easy to connect them right so uh, let me point out one example here so pledis uh, uh, one of the famous company uh, because uh, they like built a uh, set of apis which consumes legacy apis exposed by many banking organizations and bank and the retail organizations and uh, implement a simplified easily consumable set of apis so with this uh, they made their customers and the users and enable them to consume these apis easily uh, without having uh, much pain so with this they built like a uh, lot of value around this company because with this implementation people can easily consume data uh, unlike old days so eventually uh, this was sold to visa uh, to billion dollar deal all this happened because mainly because uh, the value they build using the apis so uh, if we consider about the business growth going business is also about building your cost, uh, building products that your customers aren't asking sometimes your customers may not exactly asking these features or these apis but sometimes that can be like ease their life and uh, their day to day operations they can do easily so that kind of experience you can give them so so one thing is you can build on demand other thing is you can use your imagination and build sort of products to help your customers and ease their life so in order to build uh, these apis uh, you need to have api product fact kind of thing right so uh, when you have uh, this kind of api product factory uh, main point would be like api manufacturing and uh, then uh, under the manufacturing process you need to have different technologies you can have a rest api soap api it can be graphql grpc event based apis so likewise you can uh, build your api so you can design your api then you can build your api right so then uh, you need to have some sort of integration systems and the services to uh, connect these connect and build these apis and uh, then you need some sort of packaging because uh, when you are like when you have implemented the api you need to package that uh, into some sort of product so you need to have uh, sls and you need to have documentation Uh, you can associate different business plan and you can do the categorization so we'll look into these things in detail in the next few slides 
but uh, it's not just having the service definition and uh, SAGA file. It's not just API, right? So you, if we, if we need to be business API, you need to have all these other concepts, including the business plan, uh, like documentation. Sometimes there can be SDKs. So likewise, there are different things that you need to associate when you need to expose your API as a digital product for the business API, right? So then you need to uh, deliver these APIs to uh, your customers, right? So then, uh, like any other product, you need to advertise this stuff somewhere, right? So usually when you have APIs, what you can do is you can go to kind of API marketplaces or the API platform and uh, list them there, right? So once you list them there, uh, people will see your APIs and they can uh, read your documentation and they can uh, find you. So basically this part will formally known as a discoverable, I mean, make API discoverable, right? So once the once this part enable, you can deliver your APIs to uh, outside world. And also, uh, you know, do these things, you need to have a set of like automation process. So, uh, so in, in the delivery phase, we can have like multiple different environments. Uh, you, you may have like staging, dev, QA, prod, likewise. So you need to have some sort of CI, CD and delivery pipelines to move your API products across different environments, right? So then you can finally move into your uh, API into production deployment and people can start consuming them. So if we consider WSO2 platform, uh, then we do cater all of these requirement. So uh, in this diagram, like uh, we, we place almost all our components into single picture, give a complete overall idea about how our platform behaves and how it works, right? So here you can see mainly we have three parts. First, uh, in your left side, you will see the management plane, data plane, and the control plane. So if you are familiar with this TO or the service mesh kind of thing, you may already have heard about these terms. So in our management plane, uh, we mainly have uh, API publisher and developer portal and mainly analytics, right? So this management plane allow us to manage our APIs. So I mean, you can create your APIs and you can see how your API is being consumed, uh, which part of the country um, you are getting most of the traffic. So likewise, you can see the business insight. So business insight also you can like separate out to different levels and uh, those kind of things available in the uh, management plane. And if you go to data plane, in the, uh, so like I mentioned earlier, when you create API, that API need to be deployed in the gateways or some sort of a runtime, right? So mainly data plane means that's just a runtime. So it can consist either API gateway or API micro gateway, which is like a fast and the low resource consumption version of the gateway. And also if you have like uh, service measures like Istio or anything like that, you can enable API management gateway runtime uh, within the Istio itself as well. So it knows how to connect to our control plane and uh, do the uh, request response validation part. And if you are in the Kubernetes world, then we do have a set of artifacts for them as well. So if you want to deploy gateway into the Kubernetes as like a scalable service, then you can do that as well. So then uh, these gateways are also bound with the set of business services, which can be microservices or they can be legacy services and cloud cloudless, cloud uh, services or else those can be serverless functionalities as well, right? So in your right side, you will see the control plane. So that will do the like controlling part, basically key management, traffic management, uh, anomaly detection. So if you are familiar with the WSO2 product terminologies, uh, uh, our key manager, traffic manager, and our anomaly detection engine, all these components will fall under control plane. So in addition to them, in the lowermost layer, you will see, uh, we do have integration, uh, enterprise integration offering that will help you to uh, do the low code integration. And also if you are doing streaming integration, and also if you are doing the code based integration, uh, those things available. So in addition to them, uh, we do have a set of connectors 
that connect to external systems and pull data uh, for you. And uh, we do have identity and access management additional layer, so which will do the identity federation part, SSO, uh, multi-factor authentication or adaptive authentication. And likewise, if you have complicated solutions, then we do have uh, offering for them as well. So this, this is the uh, basic idea how you can use WSO2 API management platform to uh, deliver your uh, business APIs. Right. So in pre uh, previous session, I discussed mainly about APIs and the API products. So now uh, we will see uh, what are the additional things that you need to focus uh, when you build uh, API products, right? So when you build API products, uh, you can do a value addition. And like I mentioned earlier, you can expose this to multiple levels, right? So if uh, first let's uh, consider uh, organizational scenario, right? So you may have your HR system and, um, and your internal uh, set of developers uh, need to use this uh, uh, employee details uh, data, right? So in that case, you can have different level of uh, authorized person, right? So some persons allow to see your salary, some persons don't allow to see their salary. So likewise, there are different levels in this organization, right? So then uh, by having API in your organization itself help you to uh, build that uh, solution and through that uh, you can uh, have some sort of a control within your organization as well, right? So then over the time when your business goes up, you may have a set of business partners and you need to expose your APIs to your partner. So in that case also, you can ask your partners to come to your store and uh, explicitly provision them into your system and uh, open some sort of account for them in your system and let them to consume APIs, right? So they can now, uh, not only your organization internal employees, but your partners also can uh, consume your APIs, right? And at some point, you may realize your organization uh, do some, uh, I mean, is working on something valuable for entire world, for entire community, right? So in such cases, what you can do is you can go up to API marketplace level and enable this for entire world kind of thing. So anyone can come and uh, then they can use uh, your APIs, right? So uh, next I will discuss a little bit about some of other things that you need to focus on when you uh, make API products. So this point is mainly about the quality. So when you make API API into API product mainly focus on the quality. So when you are, you have REST API, you can have REST API design perspectives. You can use right HTTP verb, right path, and the right naming conventions and all these things, right? So next thing is making your APIs discoverable. So it doesn't matter how many APIs you have, if your business like partners or your consumers cannot find them, there's no point of having your APIs, right? So you can use tags, categories, search, and other capabilities available in API manager product to uh, allow your APIs discoverable, okay? So then uh, make your APIs easy to use, right? So you can have like intuitive interfaces and you can provide them a trial run. So basically they can come to your store and try out your APIs. And then uh, you can uh, deploy a set of SDKs. So for example, uh, if Android uh, developer is like consuming your API, that particular person does not have to write, write everything from the scratch. So they can uh, directly download SDK and start from that point or not. And also business and the technical documentation, very important. Those need to be in very highest quality. And uh, that, that helps uh, them to like uh, implement something quickly out of your APIs. So then uh, you will need to have uh, some sort of like uh, uh, API development lifecycle. So you can have like a set of CI CD processes which uh, deploy your APIs across uh, multiple different uh, environment. And uh, other point I need to discuss is make your APIs safe to you. So usually uh, when, our, when we make system more and more secure, it's getting a bit hard to conceive, right? So uh, you have to focus on this thing as well. So the, because these things doesn't go very well hand in hand, right? So then we have to focus on this thing and uh, uh, 
uh, while you are enforcing the security and all the other access control mechanism, uh, you need to focus on the customer experience as well. So because like if they have to do 100 things, then they won't like convince to use your system, right? So without troubling them, you can use like uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning kind of capabilities uh, that we have in our product, right? So most of the people think API security ends with the authentication and authorization. But if we like uh, consider today API industry, it's not really true. So there are like multiple different things, right? Rate limiting, payload scanning, bot detection, uh, surveillance, data, data scanning. So all these things uh, we can use. Right. So this is how WSO2 API management product address these requirements. So like I mentioned earlier, we do have authentication authorization. And on top of that, we have rate limiting access control, uh, payload scanning for different like attacks kind of things. And also we do have API uh, artificial intelligence power threat detection for the APIs. And on top of that, uh, we do have like uh, API design time security uh, implementations as well. And also your system uh, need to be scaled on demand. So it's not like uh, early days, we do the capacity planning and we plan for the peak load. So these days, what we are mainly do is uh, have some sort of elastic uh, uh, like uh, gateway service and let them to scale on demand. So whenever we have low load, uh, resource consumption will be less. Whenever we have high load, resource consumption will be high. And also it's very important to build elastic data pane. Uh, so that is the previous point I mentioned early. So your gateways and the traffic management and the authentication purpose, all these things need to be scaled as your demand goes. And uh, when you start this process, you cannot, uh, I mean, stay like that forever. So you have to like iterate and improve your product. You have to see how your uh, consumers are using your API you have to collect the monitor, uh, you have to monitor and uh, collect your matrices and uh, get the feedbacks. And based on these feedbacks, you have to like uh, improve your product and you can do the set of innovations and uh, like uh, uh, develop your APIs, right? So, and uh, then finally, I'll discuss a little bit about the business models for your API. So when you have a business API, uh, you can have a different business model. So you can first let them to access free, or like uh, there can be other methods where developers and consumers get uh, consumer space for API. So basically they, they come to you and uh, use your API and pay for you, you get paid for that. Other thing is the developers and consumers get paid for the API usage. So affiliated marketing, e-commerce platform are some of the examples. So there can be other ways like indirect revenue. So which is like mainly doesn't directly uh, depend on the API uh, consumption of the API usage, but underlying business will uh, bring you uh, some money. So if you are interested about the API uh, business model, then there's a nice presentation by the John Marshall uh, and he did it like quite long time back, but still it's valid for today as well. So, uh, so we do support these things uh, with the uh, API product monetization. So like I mentioned earlier, implicit and the explicit monetization are there. So in the explicit monetization, we can like uh, split into multiple parts, like one time pay, pay as you go and likewise. So I think uh, with this, uh, uh, my 30 minutes uh, end, and uh, I have a few messages for you. So recently WSO2 API manager list as, listed as like uh, leader in uh, uh, Forest Wave. So you can go to this link and download that report. And uh, also, we recently released uh, WSO2 API Manager 3.2 version uh, with a lot of new additions and a lot of new features and GraphQL support. All these things are there. Private micro gateway support on Kubernetes is also there. So I'd like to uh, invite you all to you know uh, download this product and uh, try out this.